Hello, St. Anne's. It's great to see you all. Today, I am going to be reading A Rabbit's Tale, celebrating the history of St. Anne's Episcopal School, 1950 to 2000. It was written about 20 years ago by Justin Matat, and it was written in celebration of our 50th anniversary. Pretty soon, we're gonna be celebrating our 70th anniversary, and we are looking forward to having all of you here on campus for that. So here we go. Good day to you all. Psst, down here. The name is Peter, Peter Rabbit. Not a really original name, I know, but it was the name I was given after all. I have been asked to tell you the story of the past 50 years here at St. Anne's Episcopal School. I have had the enviable position of sitting in front of the main building all these years and have seen the comings and goings and changes. This is a most remarkable tale, T-A-I-L, I mean tale, T-A-L-E, about a most remarkable place. I have lived at St. Anne's for over 50 years. I was here before the school was a spreading campus of buildings. In 1950, Mother Noel asked Sister Irene to found the school on simple faith, entrusting the campus to her capable hands. Sister Irene started the school in a converted chicken coop with only two kindergarten students. But where did the chickens sleep? Children once lived here who were afflicted with polio, rheumatic fever, rheumatic fever and tuberculosis. They came in on crutches and in wheelchairs. Some left on their own two feet. The sisters had accomplished a vital mission with the children. The school was well on the way to building a wondrous place to nurture the children and many adults as well, not to mention a few rabbits. All the sisters in the Order of St. Anne pitched in, doing whatever it took. They planted and marked their own gardens with a special imprint, just as they did with the children. They were building a place where children could learn arithmetic, reading, writing, and much more about life. With an attitude of service, the sisters planted and watered sapling trees by hand with buckets of water. They planted orchards, nurtured apples, grapes, and apricots, making the fruit into jelly, juice, and wine. Garden tours opened the spreading beauty to anyone in the area. They kept beehives and produced vegetables from their labors. But now I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning. We must tour the campus when the moon is full, the flowers are blooming, and the children are home asleep in their beds. It is when I first met Mother Irene and learned the story of the enchanted schoolyard. Sometime around the turn of the century, the University of Denver deeded the farmland which our school sits upon to a young professor. The gentleman farmer raised cows and pigs while teaching as well. Young boys would ride their bikes out here when this was still in the country. The farmer welcomed them with gingerbread and buttermilk. Our real thirst quencher, buttermilk, huh? Our place was always welcoming to children. Later, the land was sold to the Junior League of Denver, a group of smart businesswomen who purchased the land at a good price so that they could take care of ill children. The League donated the land and buildings to a group of Episcopal sisters from Boston in 1931. Pretty nice gift. The sisters set about to live in the converted convent. They baked 4,000 host wafers per day for many churches and missions. That's 1,460,000 per year. Do the math. Some were delivered by dog sled in Alaska. They continued their ministry to children with polio and tuberculosis, educating and nurturing them until a cure for polio was found in the mid-1950s by Dr. Salk. And antibiotic drugs were used for those with tuberculosis. Yay for Dr. Salk. Boo for shots. He studied hard, just like you. The cemetery is a sacred place. Here the sisters who gave so generously to others are at rest and are always remembered. Along with the sisters is one very special dog named 
BD, Beans Dog. There were always school mascot dogs and cats, <clears throat> but BD was a very special border collie. He would herd the school children at playtime and was loved by all. He ran about with a little kitty called Tiger, and together they guarded the campus at night. We often walked together under a full moon. BD was so loved here that he is at rest in the cemetery with the sisters, an intelligent dog, and he didn't chase rabbits. That little cabin style building over there, we call the Hermitage. It is a place mother would obligate the sisters for one day a month to retreat. A day set aside just for them. With a lunch basket and a book, the sisters spent an entire day doing whatever they wanted to do. It was welcome after spending countless hours serving everyone else. We all wish for such an obligation, yes? As our school formed, a growing philosophy emerged. A big emphasis was put on civility and good manners, and a tolerance for all people and animals, of course. Many traditions began and have been carried on from the former days when children would take up their crutches and dance on May Day. Children still annually dance about the Maypole. A May Queen is crowned and many flowers burst out in spring colors all about the schoolyard. On May Day, mothers of the preschool children wear bright and colorful newspaper hats, hand decorated by their little ones. If I got one for every one of my little bunnies, they would fill every building here. You know us rabbits. <clears throat> Other traditions included Founders Day, where our founder is honored and celebrated along with the futures of our children. Children plant a tree to commemorate the year and the schoolyard comes alive with new spring life. Grandparents' Day is also very special at St. Anne's. The children tour their special person around the campus proudly. They put on an assembly for them and take lots of pictures. I am in most of them, of course, and write poems to let them know how special they are. There are many special events all year around here. The children are greeted every day by the headmaster and welcomed into our enchanting garden environment. I watch the children come and go each day. St. Anne's campus is full of bird song and the laughter and chatter of happy children finding their way to and from classes. If you listen well, you will hear St. Anne's bell ringing. The main bell came to St. Anne's from St. Mark's because their neighbors thought it was too noisy. We think our neighbors appreciate the bell song calling our children. Did you know our chapel was once a stable for horses and a few rabbits too? When the sisters lived here, they were the only ones allowed in the sanctuary. Later, the children would sit on the floor in the middle and the teachers would sit on benches on the sides. If you look around the chapel, you will note many icons brought from all ends of the earth. One of the most prominent and important symbols is that of St. Nicholas, the patron saint of children, and rabbits too, dear old Santa Paws. Here, near Mother's Cottage in the little greenhouse is the famous fig tree nestled behind the main building. The fig tree is over 60 years old and was planted by Sister Geraldine. Between the cottage and the Mother Irene Library is a garden planted by the children with peace daffodils to join in a national push for peace. Don't forget to go into the Mother Irene Library. It is enchanting with a cozy fireplace, wonderfully illustrated walls, and many good books and computers. The library is named for Mother Irene, who shared a great love of books and always enjoyed reading to children. After she retired at age 93, Mother Irene sat and rocked on her porch near the fireplace garden watching the children go by. Sometimes when a child needed special help with math, she would play poker or teach them other card games. She was a lot of fun. If she wasn't sitting on her porch, you might find her taking in a baseball game or in a bookstore, always eager to learn more. She would be proud of the accomplished 
sports teams here today. Nearby is the beautiful rose garden where Mother Irene tested her roses for a popular flower catalog company. Mother Irene earned the right to name those roses which thrived best in the Colorado climate. What would have been wrong with the white rabbit rose? When the hundreds of roses bloom, the air is perfumed and enchanted. The rest of the campus is filled with flowers, trees, and climbing vines reminding us daily of God's plan for the first garden. If you look to the middle school and the lower school buildings, you will note the stained glass crafted by the children of St. Anne's and a few scary gargoyles. How about our rabbit gargoyle kids? Everything here on campus has been designed with the children in mind. St. Anne's is truly a place for children to learn and to take with them fond memories and lessons throughout their lives to come. Rounding the margin where Mother Irene once lived, you see the birdbath garden and the vegetable garden that once supplied many meals for the sisters. Mmm, yummy carrots, but I promise I didn't eat them. The main building has ramps from the days of yesteryear when sisters pushed children in wheelchairs to their bedrooms and to therapy. Much has changed and improved here, but one thing that has always remained is the emphasis on children. Children are equipped for life in many ways here at St. Anne's, and they have a wonderful time while learning as well. Famous authors, a president, and other dignitaries have visited us, all left here touched by our unique school. We have graduated many children and sent them on to successful lives. Well, there is much more to tell, but alas, the morning carpool is now beginning to show up and soon the campus will be filled with activity and children. Our tour has gone a little long and I must now return to my place in front. I hope you had fun touring the grounds with me, learning about our history and the present wonders of St. Anne's Episcopal School. I have seen so many happy children here. Time flies quickly. The children grow up and move on. As they say, hair today, gone tomorrow. But each child has a wonderful place to come back to here at St. Anne's. Come see me in another 50 years. I will be right here. Many of the reasons you love the Enchanted Schoolyard will be the same. And surely there will be some wonderful additions too. We still have so much to do. And we look forward to seeing all of you back on campus soon. We miss your smiling faces. Happy Founders Day. Take care, everybody.